Hi, everybody. It is July 5, 2019. I need to document the extremely low frequencies being set off in Southern California and couple that with news about these earthquakes that happened, a 6.4 quake, a 5.4 magnitude. You had several four, several in the three range, these earthquakes. I also want to remind everybody that our military has an earthquake weapon, ultrasonic or acoustic weapons to destroy runways, buildings, bridges, destructive to structures, war making potential. They can set off earthquakes with these structures that are littered all over our country. They are weapons. These are our new weapons, frequencies. We've got transmitter sites. Uh, when you see an awful lot of Gwent Towers back to back, that's a transmitter site. But we have an awful lot of extremely low frequencies just sitting on their own all over the country. They are littered and they line our interstates. These extremely low frequencies can be emitted through the ground or into the atmosphere. They can control the weather, steer weather fronts, modify, manipulate the weather with these frequencies. And I will link below to these articles. Um, HARP, the um, the High Frequency Active Rural Research Program up in Alaska is not just a benign uh, research project. They are emitting extremely powerful high frequencies into the ionosphere and they push the ionosphere up and when that ionos ionosphere, when they let go of the frequency that's pushing it up, when that ionosphere comes back down it like bounces back down with extremely low frequencies, very powerful, and they strike the earth and they could cause earthquakes. And we've had, and we still have, many, many articles, many articles uh, here, weather weapons and earthquake bombs. World leaders condemn Britain and America's secret arsenal. And yes, there were extremely low frequencies emitted, which I will show you. But first, let's listen to this news broadcast. We do begin with that major earthquake rocking Southern California, felt for hundreds of miles, a state of emergency at the epicenter tonight. It is the biggest quake in decades there. You can see the shaking workers running for cover inside this restaurant. Cans and bottles knocked off grocery shelves. Gas leaks and power lines downed. Crews battling house fires. Multiple injuries reported tonight and the hospital there at the epicenter in Ridgecrest forced to evacuate. So far, hundreds of aftershocks, and the region is bracing for more. ABC's Eva Pilgrim starts us off in Kern County. Tonight, damage reports coming in. Southern California rocked by a major earthquake, the largest to hit the region in 20 years. Surveillance inside this restaurant capturing the intense shaking. Employees running for cover, pictures falling off the wall. The 6.4 quake hitting at 10.33 a.m. local time in the Mojave Desert. The epicenter, 11 miles northeast of the town of Ridgecrest near the China Lake Naval Air Base. All of a sudden, next thing we know, we just started feeling rapid shaking and I was grabbing for her and things were flying off the walls. Near the epicenter, this house completely engulfed. We have multiple injuries. We've had two house fires. We've had uh, small vegetation fires, power lines down, gas leaks. 20 victims taken to Ridgecrest Hospital, where at the same time, they had to evacuate part of it due to unsafe conditions. The computers were flying off onto the ground. Uh, the water bottle container was shaking. All the cupboards and doors were opening. Roads ripped open outside of town. This liquor store destroyed. Contents of these supermarket shelves tossed to the floor. A big jolt and felt 
all over Southern California. The quake, lasting at least 20 seconds, fell as far away as Las Vegas. In Los Angeles, water mains bursting. All uh, units, all uh, units, we are on citywide earthquake mode. Crowds of people pouring out of buildings onto the streets. Seismologist Lucy Jones says this was a strike slip quake. That means the two plates along the fault move parallel to each other, but in opposite directions. She says 30 minutes before the main quake, there was a 4.24 shock, and this event not is small. not over yet. There is about a 1 in 20 chance that this location will be having an even bigger earthquake within the next few days that we have not yet seen the biggest earthquake of the sequence. Stark warning there. Eva Pilgrim joins us live from the quake's epicenter in Ridgecrest, California. There have been aftershocks all afternoon long. Eva, you felt one just a few minutes ago. Officials there are very concerned about more. That's right, to say we felt aftershocks just here just a minute ago. I was actually standing, I want to show you down here, and you can see how much the earth has moved in this quake. You can see the water main pipe here completely moved apart. That was done by the earthquake and the water now pooling down here. We felt about 100 plus aftershocks in the aftermath, and officials say at least 10 of those have been 4.0 or higher, and we're told that there could be one even bigger than that. That is why the mayor has declared a state of emergency. Cecilia. Eva Pil so it is true. You've had an awful lot. And this, these are the earthquakes just for the last 24 hours. I do want to bring your attention to how shallow these earthquakes are. Sorry for that. Sorry for the interruption. Anyway, a lot of earthquakes. Uh, within the last 24 hours. And yes, I do want to bring your attention to how shallow these earthquakes are. Years ago, we used to call them harp quakes because the signature is the shallow depth, usually 10 kilometers. And I do also want to point out and ask any of you, have you noticed that language is now for mainstream media articles here in the US they are using the word kilometer far more frequently than miles I think they are beginning to make language universal for that new world order anyway so the 5.4 uh, 5 that occurred just early this morning seven kilometers um, the conversion is just think less miles um, and the six ten these were induced as far as I'm concerned the frequencies this was on the third at um, Well, I'm sorry, no, July 2nd at 10 p.m. in Southern California. As you can see, these lines, I'm just slowing it down and I'll bring it back down to Southern California, but these lines that you are seeing are extremely low frequencies. The different colors, I believe, are different frequencies. They may have a particular frequency that they use to induce earthquakes. I have no doubt they do. Let me get it back to Southern California. So 10 p.m. on the 3rd. Ooh, come on. Sorry. I unfortunately just took a few second shot of what was happening in Southern California. So look at all of these lines, the very defined lines that you see. Those are extremely low frequencies. Now, this is the second 10 minutes before midnight. And you can see the different colors. So 
they could very well have induced these earthquakes. This is at 7.12 a.m. July 3rd. And you can see these extremely low frequencies being set off. I unfortunately was not focusing on California, not expecting you guys to have these earthquakes. So I only have the captures that I took. Some of the videos only have a few seconds, but yes. These lines that you see on radar, think of those as weapons. Now, they can use these extremely low frequencies and nothing could happen uh, right away. But what these frequencies are doing are disturbing all natural processes. And when they emit these frequencies, yes, from these Gwen towers, and emit them through the ground. Yeah, I don't think that it's uh, too difficult to use some common sense and logic. You see all the wires going down to the ground. And that's They're going down to the ground because they emit the frequencies through the ground. So we are seeing the collapse of an awful lot of infrastructure all over the country. They are bringing about massive destruction, uh, destructive flooding and the roads are just washing away and bridges are toppling from rain now. Can they induce an earthquake? Of course they can. Quite easily actually. Quite easily. This is July 4th at 7.25 a.m. as you can see, and the crossing of these beams, they can bring about an awful lot of destruction. But I do want you to take note of the different colors that are, I can't say definitively, but I will, uh, I'm going from what I've learned from others, that the different colors are different frequencies. So were they using a frequency to induce this earthquake? I can't say that definitively. We can't say anything definitively unless we are in the know. But could it happen? Yes. July 4th at, at uh, 7.30. Is that right? I'm sorry. At 4.30 p.m. in Southern California. This is July 4th at 6.30 p.m. on the West Coast. And you see the different colors. Again, I was not focusing on uh, California. I would have zoomed in and caught all of these frequencies and then documented in video where you could easily see them, but I think you can see the lines jutting out right here and the different color frequencies that they are using. And this is July 4th at 10.37 p.m. Uh, the time in California. And I I believe I did zoom in on this because I was concerned about the frequencies that I was seeing close to Oroville Dam. But these, yes, when you see these lines, you can think of these as bullets. Think of them as bullets. They are shooting bullets off into this area. They are weapons.
I wish we could bring a stop to this violence that is occurring. The weather used as weapons. But we certainly need the numbers and we lack the numbers. Let me see if I... Yes, I did. Okay. More concerned about these frequencies seeing I very rarely see extremely low frequencies set off in Northern California. I usually see the radar and it's sometimes it's generally faint around the Oroville area. So I was wondering what they were doing there. But as you can see, the use of these frequencies I I only in the recent months began to see the frequencies set off powerfully in Southern California. So I'm not surprised that you've had so many earthquakes. I I hope to God that nothing bigger occurs in this area. I hope that you all stay safe. It is important for everyone to prepare for anything all over the country, all over in, in uh, the world at this point, but here, the flooding that we have seen, these earthquakes now occurring in California, they saying there may be a bigger one in the next couple of days. Okay, well, I do think they have to account for all of these frequencies. But we need people to wake up. We need people to wake up. Now, the Air Force Base that was close to the earthquake, because everybody needs to be running down to that base asking questions. We see the frequencies on radar. What are you doing? Because the use of these frequencies, they don't have to deliberately, intentionally bring about an earthquake. They can do it inadvertently. Oops, sorry. We didn't intend for that. But we do know extremely low frequencies do cause earthquakes. So it's kind of like um, collateral damage. Oops, sorry. All links are below.